Okay, so hi everyone. So I'm going to talk about uh, I'm going to talk about the main findings that we did regarding web archive information retrieval during the development of the Portuguese web archive. Uh, I'm the speaker today, but most of this work that I'm going to present was done by my former colleague Miguel Costa. So, uh, oh my God. Okay, now now we're on. So information retrieval is the activity of obtaining information resources relevant to uh, information need from a collection of resources, of information resources. So this is the definition in Wikipedia, and I'm going to talk a little bit about each one of these uh, aspects of information retrieval. So to start, regarding web archive information retrieval, which are the information needs of web archive users. So obviously, we reviewed the literature, but we also did our own research. For instance, we did some usability testing during the development of our system, and uh, in these laboratory studies, we provide the users the chance to try our web archive and let them tell us what they think about it, what were their information needs. We also did online questionnaires and also search log mining to identify which were the main information needs regarding web archives. So in information retrieval, we usually classify the information needs in three classes, which are uh, navigational, informational, and transactional. So uh, just to give an example, a navigational need is to see how was the, um, the, the site of the Library of Congress in 1996. So we want to find some information to navigate there. An informational need is to, ha to know how many people work at the Library of Congress in 1996. So this is to know an information. We don't have to necessarily navigate to there. And, trans and the transactional informational need will be to make a copy of the site of the Library of Congress. So in this case, we want to make a transaction with the information source. So uh, our results showed that most of the web archive information needs were navigational. So this may look a little weird, this percentage here, but uh, okay. But this, this percentage is, uh, it depends on the, the, um, the collecting method that you applied. So it, not all of them have statistically, statistical relevance, but we can clearly see that most information needs are navigational. So then we also did some research about which were the information resources that were provided by web archives. So we conducted two surveys in 2010 and 2014. Um, so these were based on direct questionnaires and public information. And the first one originated a, a Wikipedia page called List of Web Archiving Initiatives. If you don't know that, that yet, please go there and update it and contribute it to keep it up to date. Uh, so in 2014, we revi revisit the information that was on the Wikipedia page and on the literature, and we uh, counted that there were already at least 68 in web archiving initiatives spread across 33 countries. And this summed up a, a total of 500, 304 billion web archive files since 1996, summing a total of 70 petabytes of data. So we already have a lot of information resources to work on. And the, most of these information resources are available through uh, URL search, which is typically provided by the, Wayback the Internet Ar Archive Wayback Machine or Open Wayback. But as we know, this has a little big drawback that is we must know the exact URL from the past that contain the information that we need. So an alternative, um, access method is full text search, which is supported by some web archive uh, systems. Now, uh, the problem that you identified was that the technology used by most full text search uh, systems is based on, based on Lucene or Lucene extensions. And Lucene was not designed for web archive information retrieval. And we observed that the, 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 the search results were not that relevant to fulfill the, the information needs. So this was our big challenge. We wanted to know how to obtain relevant information resources through full text search. So a full text index is like a huge book, book glossary. So this could be uh, uh, an example, this is an example of, of a, 
a full text index. Uh, so when you're talking about information retrieval over web archived collections or web collections, it has, it has to, to search for archived pages that contain given words, and there are millions of web pages that contain the search words. But in web archive information retrieval, we have the additional challenge of time because archived pages are spread across time. So to provide relevant information, we must consider time in web archive information retrieval. So basically what we wanted to do would be to know how to rank the relevance of temporal search results or which re re results must be present on the top of our search engine results page. Um, so previous studies in the literature showed that uh, temporal information has been exploited to improve, improve information retrieval, and this information can be extracted from web archives. So our research hypothesis was to improve web archive information systems by exploiting, exploiting temporal information intrinsic, intrinsic to web archives through machine learning techniques, and in particular by planning learning to rank methods. Okay, so this is a, a very, um, important figure and I'll try to explain it the best that I can. So this is how learning to rank works. So first you have a test collection, which is also known as a ground truth or gold collection. So basically this collection has the documents that has the information that we, that is part of our collection, the topics that reflect information needs and then relevance judgments. So basically the relevance judgments say which are the documents that are relevant to each topic, to each information need. And then we have ranking features. So we can try to uh, rank the results by applying different functions. So we must keep in mind that computers are stupid. So computers, they just understand uh, functions and mathematic uh, functions that we give them. So they must have some math to understand what's relevant means to a human. So there are several heuristics, several ranking features, such as, for instance, the frequency of a query term on the text of document D. This could provide, like if, 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 uh, if you issue a query and there's a document that has this query term many times on this text, probably is more relevant than another one that has a lower frequency of the query term. Or another uh, ranking feature could be the number of in-links in -links to a given document. So a document that receives many in-links from, from another pages is more important than a document that does not receive any links. So we pick up this test collection and the ranking features and we give it to learning to rank algorithms. So basically the, this the, the learning to rank, uh, tries th the machine tries to learn which are the best results to, pr to, to, to yield, to originate the best ranking model. So the ranking model is basically how we combine different ranking features to provide the best results. So here you can have an example in which uh, we provided the learning to rank uh, um, method to ranking features. We gave them the test collection and then he learned that the best ranking model will be to provide a weight of 0 0.6 to the frequency and 0 0.4 to the um, number of in-links. So this is the ranking model. This is a, just a, an example, but this is how it works. So the learning to rank method automatically assigns weight to each ranking feature to know if it is more or less important to originate relevant results. So the problem in the beginning is that we did not have any test collection for web archives. So the, if we give another test collection to the, learning, to the learn to rank module, it will learn wrongly because the test collection was not representative of our, inf of our information. So we created one. We created a, a test collection of about 255 million documents with a total of 8.4, uh, 8.9 terabytes that, that comprised six uh, archived web collections. And these were collections uh, that were created through bread crawls from the .pt domain, uh, selective crawls that were uh, created through diary crawls of, of a, a, a set of, of, of uh, online Portuguese publications, and also uh, information that we got from the Internet Archive 
since 1996 until 2007. And this spent uh, 40 uh, years uh, of, of, of time span, so from 96 to 2010. Then we created 50 navigational uh, topics that simulated the, the information needs of, of users. For instance, here we can have an example of the page of the public newspaper before 2000. That's an example of a topic. And then we assigned relevance judgments. So we used three human, three judges that uh, gave a relevance judgment from zero to two. So zero was irrelevant, one was relevant, and two was very relevant. And then we, we did an automatic process to expand this, this manual uh, judgments to a larger um, to a larger set. Um, so this is an example of our test collection. So all this information is available online. So this is an example of, of a topic that uh, describes an information need. And this is an example of an a relevance judgment. So here you have the topic ID. So this topic ID maps to the topics here. Okay, this is worth mentioning. Why is this here? This is a user, useless legacy field. And why do we have this if you did this from scratch? <laughs> this is <laughs> puzzling. So this exists because we use the, exam, this, the same format of the, the track uh, QRELs. So track is the text retrieval evaluation campaign. So this is a, a large scale um, campaign that is used to evaluate collaboratively uh, information retrieval systems. So already there is already software to process this kind of information. So you use this format so that you can reuse the tools and other people could also use our, um, our, our test collection. So this is here just for uh, legacy um, and, and compatibility with, with the track software. So basically we have an example here, it's the, a topic ID, a document ID, and then the relevance judgment that was assigned to, to this uh, QRL. Uh, so uh, regarding learning to rank methods, we apply three different learning to rank methods and we use six uh, relevance metrics, which are quite standard in, in information retrieval, which are NDCG at K and precision at K using K for one, five and 10. So what does this mean? Uh, picking up the example of precision, precision at K when K is one, it means how many, if you have a relevant result with one, uh, Sorry, how many relevant results we have for each, uh, for the first result. Uh, when K5, it means how many relevant results you have within five results and for 10, so this is how it works. And we, we generated 68 ranking features and we used the uh, well-known uh, ranking features such as the ones used by Lucene, BM25, TF, IDF, but we also created and designed new temporal features. So um, our first ranking feature, temporal ranking feature that we test in our experiments was based on intuition that persistent documents are more relevant for navigational queries. And the results that we got was that in fact lifespan is correlated to relevance. So documents with high relevance tend to have a longer time span. And here, this is kind of funny because we, we, this, this chart here presents documents that are older than one year, and these are very old documents when you're talking about web pages. <laughs> so here you can see that as, as we, um, that the documents, as they tend to get older, they tend to get more relevant. And um, also the number of versions is also correlated to relevance. So documents with, our, with higher relevance tend to have more versions. Um, so this table here summarizes the main findings that, that we did regarding uh, relevance. So here we, we, we did a lot of experiments, but I'll just present here the, the res results for precision at one, five, and 10, and compare it, uh, the, the, the best results that we got, which, are, which is a ranking model with temporal features derived to the random forest uh, method in comparison to the precision that we got using Lucene, uh, just Lucene uh, ranking feature. And we can see very significant um, increase in the relevance of um, search results. So we got really happy with these with this, uh, results that we obtained. Um, 
So we have, um, but we have 68 uh, ranking features and it's not attainable to put them all in production. So we did some preliminary work in which we tried to manually identify which were the, the ranking features that were uh, more important. So how do we see this? Well, if, if a ranking feature, feature got a, a weight that is very low, probably doesn't have much influence on the ranking model, so we can remove it. Plus, if we have two ranking features that are very similar, we could also remove one of them. But we need to validate this, this more thoroughly, so this is just an initial uh, selection. Anyway, the results that we got was that the, the six most important ranking features were BM25 over um, all fields, TFIDF, number of versions of a new URL, TFIDF over the host name of a URL, the length of the shorter text with all the query terms in the title, and the days between the first and the last versions of a new URL. However, we do not, we do not have this information in production at archive.pt uh, yet, because as we said, we need to do some more research. We have um, a different uh, ranking model that I can share with you later. Uh, that was derived from a uh, track collection. So the track collection does not have yet the, the, r the temporal scope. So this is not, not the best uh, ranking model that you can have in production, but this is our reality now. Um, anyway, the, 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 the ranking model that we have basically analyzes the, the URL, the, the information on the URL, the title, the text body, and the anchor text of the incoming links. And another thing that we tried to, to experiment and research was to know if several ranking models learned for a specific period of time are more effective than a single ranking model for all the, the, the collection across time. So why should you have several ranking models? Well, basically because the web evolves across time. So technology changes, language changes, web graph structures, uh, changes. So if you apply a ranking model that works very well in 2015, probably it won't work so good in 1996. So plus in scientific, uh, scientific literature, it was also shown that uh, using a single model that fits all data may not be a good idea. So we uh, tried to, to we, did, we did several experiments to, to derive, to, sorry, to get several ranking models um, and compare these results with a single ranking model. And uh, we got here, here the, the, the gains were not that significant, but the best result that we got was, was through um, four ranking models for 14 years, we got an increase of 3.3% uh, in comparison to having just one ranking model for the 14 years. Okay, this is a very humble gain, gain but we believe that if we have a longer time span, this will get more important and we'll have larger gains. But we only have a 14 years time span, so we cannot test this uh, more thoroughly, but in the future, maybe we can repeat the experiment and, and see how it goes. So to, to finish, um, regarding web archives and web, ar web archive users and web archive uh, information needs, we, observe that they first have navigational needs and then informational needs. And they search as if they were in web archives and they prefer full text search and, oops, uh, okay. Um, and the web archive information retrieval system, they must be optimized for uh, web archive users and some needs are not, uh, are not um, fulfilled by current information retrieval technology. So we try to, to improve this kind of technology and we concluded that um, relevant documents tend to have a longer uh, lifespan and more versions and the, the ranking models can be, um, we can derive good ranking models by applying learning to rank techniques. So as future hard work, we need to do the feature selection to get our best uh, results, in, in our best ranking model in, in production. So besides precision, when you have a running service, you're gonna have to take into account several other things. How much time do the ranking features take to be computed? How do they impact the response speed? So this is a lot of work that we still have to do before we get all excited and just put a new ranking model on, on in production. This could have a really uh, bad result. 
Um, so, um, well, I didn't talk about that, but one thing that we must always g provide to users is speed. Speed, they need speed all the time. They will have things in Google, they want things in Google time. Even if the, the precision is not the best, they'll, ref they'll reformulate their query and they'll get more happy than having a very accurate or precise result after five minutes. Um, so, and you will need to have test collections to generate them for informational needs. And uh, like who was the president of the United States in 2007? This is something that we didn't test because we don't have a test collection for this and we don't, uh, do not have the resources to create it. Maybe all of us could do it, but all just us, we, we cannot at this time. And the must have from users that we identified since day one is image search. So they really, really want image search from web archives. So basically we need your collaboration. So I'm here until the, the end of the week. So talk to me, and afterwards, <laughs> talk to me while I'm here. I'm, I'm through? Yeah. Okay, just one last one. Uh, sorry, sorry. No, did, how m did I end it my time or did I? Okay, so all our stuff is open source, okay? So all our software, our test collections, data sets, everything is open source. It is available at Google Cloud PWA Technologies, but as you, most of you know, Google Cloud will shut down and we are migrating to the new name will be Full Past of the project. And uh, we have several publications about this, in case you need to, to know more. I'd just like to emphasize the last one, which is the PhD thesis of my colleague, Information Search in Web Archives, which he, I, I, I really suggest you to take a look at it, because I think you're going to get some really interesting insights.